Hi there, my name's Scott, and welcome to my channel, Trauma Team Racing. Um, this is primarily a sim racing channel, um, so we do a lot of triple screen stuff and do a lot of streaming at the same time, and it was about time to upgrade the graphics card because I think a bit more horsepower would help me out. Um, we're going from an Asus Strix 3090, I managed to get my hands on a 4090 Founders Edition. Now, I've got a Corsair 4000D PC case, and there's not a lot of material on the internet as to whether this thing will fit in it. Done all the measurements, it should do, um, but there are a few caveats along the way. So if this is useful for anybody, please like, hit the subscribe button, and um, let's just get straight into it. Here we have the NVIDIA RTX 4090. Um, this graphics card measures 304mm by 137mm by 61mm. Here you see the included power cable adapter and as I'm demonstrating it does not have a lot of flex at all and this is where the main problem comes in with regards to fitting it into many PC cases. Now if you want to fit the 4090 Founders Edition safely into your Corsair 4000D you're going to want to use Corsair's power cable which they've recently bought out. This is the Corsair 600 watt PCIe 5.1 12 VHP WR Type 4 PSU power cable. Yep, quite the mouthful. However, as you can see, there is an allowable degree of flex within this cable and it's much more lower profile and unobtrusive. Again, important to note, this is compatible with a Corsair power supply. Now, let's have a little look and get into swapping this out. So we're taking the side panels off and here is the back panel, which is gonna expose most of the electrical wiring and cable management. Now we're just disconnecting the original power supply cables from, this is an RTX 3090 by Asus Strix. And here we're just unscrewing it from its slots. Now, while supporting the 3090 and pressing the clip to disengage it from the motherboard with some gentle manipulation, the 3090 has been successfully removed. Very nice. Now we've just got to thread the power cables that were initially attached back through the back of the um, 4000D, making sure not to damage the motherboard on the way through. Again, this did prove a little tight, a little tricky, but I didn't want to remove the motherboard. Um, now I've got to disconnect the power supply from the back so I can manipulate it out of the case. Just leave it that out, and then you're going to want to disengage the original power cables that were originally attached to the 3090. Now, using the new Corsair cable, you're going to want to gently manipulate that back into the Corsair power supply. I'm using the RM1000X, which is compatible with this 600 watt cable. Again, you're going to want to hear the click as those cables go in. Make sure the cables are sitting flush and secure in the power supply. Once that's done, maneuver the power supply back into place and reattach the screws. Now, you're going to need to remove a third slot because the 4090 is indeed a big boy. Now. Ideally, you want to connect this power supply before you mount it, um, at least that's what I think, um, and you're going to want to hear a click. Now, there's a definitive click when this comes in. There has been some trouble um, with some people incorrectly mounting these and not seating it properly, which has led to some cable malfunctions, and then gently slide that in to the PCIe, which is the peripheral component interconnect express and secure it into the connecting slots with the three screws. Um, make sure it's securely mounted to the motherboard and make sure the clip clicks, and then make sure you your cable management is satisfactory. Now, um, I did have to disconnect this because I wasn't happy with the way the wire was being fed through the back, so I did reconnect this back once it was already clipped into the motherboard. Now, you wanna make real sure that this cable is sitting in nice and flush, and as you can see demonstrated here in this Paul Greengrass video, um, apologies for that, it is sitting flush on the 4090, and there is a definitive click. Now, I'm gonna give you a camera angle here that shows it does sit behind the glass panel, and it's not in contact with it. Again, it's my opinion that if you use the existing adapter cables that come with the 4090, it will hit the glass panel on the Corsair 4000D case um, and I wouldn't be happy personally um, dealing with that as I think it's a little bit too risky given the problems that are already out there um, throughout the internet. Now again this is it with the glass panel on and as you can see it is not hitting the glass panel case. Um, we're going to refit the side panels and that ladies and gentlemen is mission complete and power supply on and it's lighting up very nicely. Groovy. 
So as you can see, if you use the adapter cable that comes with the 4090 founders, it will not fit in that case. There's just too much protruding and you're gonna get that bend and flex, which you really don't want as it's entering the connector on the graphics card for the power supply. Um, the Corsair cable I think works wonderfully. Um, of course, you need a Corsair power supply to do that. Um, I do know there is, I think there is a mod that you can get which has a right angled cable, um, but I don't have any experience of that, but there's plenty of material on YouTube regarding that one. Um, thank you for watching. Again, if you found this useful, like, subscribe, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye for now.